Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying world fish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about evolutionary developmental biology of goldfish. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evil devil. Once again, I will explain to you about the embryological experiment on goldfish. In the previous videos of this series, I briefly explained the developmental process of goldfish. If you haven't watched those videos, please check the links in the description. From now on, I will explain in more detail about goldfish development. However, the developmental process of goldfish is very long and it cannot be covered in one video. So based on this developmental stage table published by our laboratory, I will divide the process into several parts and explain them. This table is known as the embryonic developmental stage table or simply developmental stage table. This table is a crucial communication tool for developmental biology. Researchers often use this table as a standard when confirming the contents of experiment and observations. For example, if I use goldfish embryo in my research and want to explain their morphology to others, having this table as a reference is very convenient. Without it, the explanation can become complicated and difficult. In this episode, I will cover the early stages of this useful developmental stage table. Specifically, I will explain the period from fertilization to gastrulation. Here are photos of goldfish fertilized eggs, embryos, larvae, and juveniles, which have appeared several times in this series. These represent different stages of development. Each of these developmental stages have a specific names and numbers. These names and numbers are given based on the visible characteristics that appear during the developmental process. It is important to understand that these names and numbers were assigned by the researchers who created the developmental stage table. Therefore, the names of the stages may vary depending on the species. For example, chickens and mice have numbered stages. On the other hand, the goldfish stages are named according to their characteristics following the zebrafish developmental staging table. This is a fertilized egg that has just been fertilized. At this stage before cleavage begins, it is simply called as a fertilized egg, zygote. It can also be called a one-cell embryo. It looks very simple. Now cleavage has begun. Cleavage in fish eggs is called discoidal cleavage, where only the cytoplasmic side of the egg divides. In amphibians like frogs and mammals like mice, cleavage progresses in a different manner. At 24 degrees, the first cleavage occurs approximately 24 minutes after fertilization and then every 25 to 30 minutes. However, speed on cleavage can vary depending on environmental conditions like water temperature. For more information on the relationship between environment and development, please refer to previous videos. By this time, you can already see that the fertilized eggs is not just a simple round shape. It has started to differentiate into the cytoplasmic side and the yolk side. These directions have already been named by researchers in the past, so we will follow those conventions. The side where cleavage begins is called the animal pole, and the side with the yolk is called the vegetal pole. These names are like the North Pole and the South Pole on the Earth. Cleavage processes in this way splitting into two, four, and so on. 
The arrangement of cells in roughly determined and will continue in this manner unless placed under extreme environmental conditions. At this stage, we can count the blastomeres. Thus, each stage can be represented by the number of blastomeres. This indicator for the characteristics of each stage is called the staging index. However, it becomes difficult from around the 64 cell stage. Up to about 64 cells, you can still count the blastomeres. But at around 128 cells, it becomes challenging. When creating the developmental stage table, I do not seriously count every cell in all embryos. In reality, it is impossible to count them all. Therefore, the developmental stage table is based on the assumption that if the cells increase one more stage from 64, it would be about 128 cells. To determine the developmental stage, count the number of cell layers. At 128 cells, there are about 5 layers. At 256 cells, there are 7 to 8 layers. And at 512 cells, there are 9 to 10 layers. Beyond this, it becomes impossible to predict the number of cells, so we can call it 1K, meaning approximately 1000 cells. The staging index used up to this point is no longer applicable. Some might think if the cells double, then 512 will become 1024 and then uh, 2048. However, it is not that simple. In the early stage of cleavage, cells divide precisely and quickly double each time. During the early blastula period, cells still divide synchronously. But in the later stages, the division speed of each cell changes, so it does not simply double. This is because the materials necessary for cleavage inherited from the mother are exhausted at this stage. More specifically, during early development, cleavage processes using maternal messenger RNA. In the later stage, the embryo started to produce its own messenger RNA to continue development. As a result, the division speed slows down and the synchronization breaks down. This point, where cell division no longer synchronized, is called mid-blastular transition. From here, it gets even more complicated. There are too many cells to count and it is unclear how many layers there are. But at this stage, a new structure appears between the yolk and the blastoderm. This structure, called the yolk synthetic layer, is histologically distinct from other cells. It becomes clear that the development is getting more complex compared to the simple repeated cleavage. The relative position of the yolk and the blastoderm can be expressed as a percentage and use an indicator. For example, if approximately 30% of the egg is covered by the blastoderm, it is called 30% epiboly. Epiboly can be described as overlapping, referring to the stage where 30% of the blastoderm overlaps the yolk. The degree of the overlapping is used as staging index. In this video, many unfamiliar names of the developmental stages will appear. These names came from the zebrafish literature that we referred when creating the developmental stage table. The zebrafish, a relative of goldfish in carp family, lay transparent eggs and has well studied embryonic development. A detailed developmental stage table was created early on for zebrafish. Therefore, we borrow the time and the staging indexes from the zebrafish developmental staging table to create our own. This allows for comparison with zebrafish and facilitates the application of various experimental methods. 
If you are curious about comparing the developmental stage tables of goldfish and zebrafish, be sure to check out the links in the description. These papers should be freely accessible so you can view them at no cost. Zebrafish developmental stage table divides the stages into seven periods zygote, cleavage, blastula, gastula, segmentation, pharyngula, and hatching. These periods are further divided into more detailed stages. It is not necessary to remember all the stages completely now, but understanding the characteristics of each period and how they transition over time will help you understand the developmental process of goldfish embryos. Now we enter the gastrula period. At this stage, the relationship between blastoderm and the yolk changes significantly. Previously, blastoderm just ahead to the yolk, but now it begins to envelop the yolk. Similar to the 30% epibory stage, we use the ratio of the blastoderm covering the yolk as the index such as 40% epibory and 50% epibory. Matching shape with name makes them easier to remember and convenient. You can see that the outer edge of the blastoderm thickens, forming a ring-like structure called as the germ ring. Beyond the germ ring stage, you will notice a bulge forming. This bulging area is known as the seed. The seed will later become part of the head. This position will change as the developmental progresses. By this stage, the embryo is far from just a mass of uniformly dividing cells. Most importantly, note that the embryo now has a polarity corresponding to future body axes, besides the animal and vegetal poles. This means that even at this early stage, there are differences in the embryo determining the future dorsal and ventral sites. Thank you for watching so far. Let's review some of the terms introduced in this video. The embryonic development of goldfish can be divided into seven periods, and this video covers the first four zygote, cleavage, blastula, and gastrula. The zygote stages immediately after fertilization and cleavage refer to the period up to 64 cells. The blastula period follows with less synchronized cell divisions. During the gastrula period, blastoderm begins to envelop the yolk. Understanding these time-based stages helps to recognize where and how changes occur in fertilized egg, aiding in distinguished finer stages. By knowing that significant changes happened even at these early stages, we can appropriate the dynamic activity within the round goldfish egg, enriching our image for life. In the next video, I would like to explain the gastro period in a bit more detail. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.